Hello, my name is James Miller, and I want to welcome you to Come and Dine. Today I'm going to do, uh, well not today, uh, I'm doing a, what is called a marathon of Bible uh, teaching lessons. And, you know, and I, I started off about, uh, I would say about two weeks ago, on the Bible Mountains. The first lesson I taught was the Mount of Olives. I just got finished with the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus was transfigured with uh, Moses and Elijah and how Peter, James, and John witnesses. And for some reason, they, they're they calling this lesson the Mount of Temptation. Now, we know that Jesus was driven into the wilderness. In fact, uh, this temptation that Jesus endured from Satan uh, came after he was baptized. Uh, and it says, uh, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight up out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he, that's probably saw John, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove lighting onto him, upon him. And lo, a voice from the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son, and who I am well pleased. And see, Jesus did not get baptized because he was a sinner. Jesus was a, a sinless, perfect man. He did this as an example, you know. And plus, as I'm getting ready to read, he was filled with the Holy Spirit afterwards. You know, and great power can come when a person is baptized. You know, and that's just my thought. But I'm going to use uh, Matthew's account, and uh, we know that uh, the temptation is, is found in all three of the Gospels: uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I did not. I should have checked to see if it was in John. So forgive me of that. But uh, it says this. Then Jesus in Matthew chapter four. And it'll be verses 1 through 11. Now, each story, each uh, gospel gives a slightly different account. This does not mean that they are contradicting each other. Uh, the Bible is not full of contradiction. It has no contradiction at all. The Bible is the infallible, inerrant, inspired Word of God. I take that stand as all Christians must take that stand. The Bible contains no errors. It teaches truth. But let's get on with that. But in Matthew's account, in chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, it says this, Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards a hungered. I mean, 40 days and 40 nights. I just cannot see my, myself doing that. I don't see no Baptist doing that, going 40 days fasting. 40 days and he, and he hungered. And I, I'm going to tell you what, I think I will be too, you know. But he was hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, "If thou be this, here's this, here's Satan coming to tempt him. One in many names. He's named. He's a tempter. He's a warring, a warring lion. He's a deceiver of the, of the accuser of the brethren. But when the tempter came to him, he said, "If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made of bread." And he, Jesus, answered and said, "It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God." Then the devil taken him up into a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of a temple. And he saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels a charge concerning thee, and in their hands I shall bear thee up. And at least thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Right here, the devil is quoting Bible. Even the devil, even the, the Satan knows the Bible. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up unto a exceedingly high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, Jesus, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him shalt only thou, thou serve. And then the devil leaveth him, and behold, his angels came and ministered of him, to him. 
And another one of the, the Gospels that talks about how Satan left him for a season. Folks, Daryl, we will go through seasons of being tempted and then not having any temptation. The question is, how are we, are we going to be ready? How are we going to prepare ourselves when that temptation comes? Now, it says right here in the introduction that the Mount of Temptation is a high, lofty mountain near the city of Jericho. That Jesus is starting his earthly ministry. He, we know, we know that he was born of a virgin, and the, and he was born of a virgin. If Jesus was not born, if he was born by normal ways, he could not be the solution. He would be a part of the problems. But we know that there's a silent for 12 years, and then Luke mentions him by what he did as a 12 year old, how he he taught with the scholars, and how they were astonished. And then we don't hear nothing about him until he, after he's baptized. There's most people that would believe, commentaries believe, that Jesus started his ministry when he was about the age of 30. But he had just been baptized, and now Satan tempts him. And it's commonly known that all these temptations work. And what we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to uh, do a rerun and go back over it. But first, Satan tempted him to command the stones to be made of bread. And we have that. And when the tempter came to him, he said to Jesus, Thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Then he was tempted to cast himself down from a pinnacle of the temple, no trusting the angels to care for him. And we just read that. And, and he, Satan said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. He wanted Jesus to commit suicide. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands shall they bear thee, Least I will be dashed upon the foot. Now, Satan quoted from Psalms uh, 91, 11, and 12. If I'm not mistaken, he probably misquoted that. That's how Satan is. He likes to tw twist around the scriptures. Thirdly, he was tempted to bow down and worship Satan if Satan would give him the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Again, the devil taking him into a high ceiling mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. You know, Satan will show you all the good stuff. I mean, that's what he does. He shows you the good times that you can have. You know, these, you got these beer commercials. Or they show you the good times. I mean, oh, you're going to have fun. But they don't show you the effect, the side effects, the downside. You know, you know, you have that one that says the good life. They don't show you the low life, folks. That's, that's that Miller Beer commercial. Oh, we're going to show you the high life. They don't show you the low life. They don't show you the people that have lost family members due to drunk drivers, due to idiots thinking they can drink their beer and drive at the same time, and they run into people and they kill people. You know, alcohol, all it does is kill, enslave, and destroy. You know, Satan likes to show you the bad stuff, but he don't show you... The bad effects, the, the effects of what happens when sin takes place. Sin does look pretty, folks, and, and sin is pleasurable. But, you know, like I said in the lesson before, it's only for a season. So, you know, J Satan was showing him all this good stuff. Hey, do this and, and worship me. But I'm going to tell you right now, if Jesus would have worshipped Satan, he could not have died for our sins. But, you know, it's funny how Satan was wanting to offer him all this stuff, and Jesus is the creator. So we see that first that uh, Satan was trying to tempt Jesus to commit sin. And, you know, and, and if he would have, he would have ceased to be able to die for our sins. And the one thing that he was trying to do, he was trying to get Jesus from stop from pleasing God. You know, and that's what Satan don't Satan does not want us to please God. You know, Jesus, and this is what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verses 29. And he, Jesus, he, he, the Father that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And another thing that Jesus acknowledges, is, you know, Jesus says, hey, I'm doing this so I can please my Father. And, you know, we need to have that same mentality is that we want to do things that can please God. You know, and another thing that Jesus acknowledges is that not only did he try to please God, but he acknowledged that he could not do nothing without the Father. In John chapter 5, verses 19, it says this, and then Jesus said this, Verily, verily, which can mean also truly, truly, 
I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what, so, what things soever he doeth, the, these also doeth the Son likewise. Then again, in uh, the same chapter, in verse 30, Jesus said this, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. And folks, we need to do this too, folks. Uh, we, need to, we, we need to acknowledge what Jesus said and in the, in the vine. He says, I am the vine, yield the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We need to acknowledge that we can do nothing apart from God, that we need God in our lives. We need to do His will and not our will. As you know, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, He prayed, Father, not my will, but Thy will be done. And I'm going to tell you right now, God's will is better than your will any time of the day. And so what we need, and great thing is, is that Jesus gave us a bunch of examples of how we can live our Christian life. And just as Jesus looked to the Father, we need to look to Jesus to know how to act. You know, to how to talk, you know. And uh, so, you know, Jesus, this is, this is something. Satan was tempting Jesus, God himself. And I like what Brother Randy said. He said, you can be the strongest man. You know, we know the strongest man in the Bible is Samson. You can be the wisest man in the Bible, and we know the wisest man is Solomon. Or you can be the most spiritual man, and that most spiritual man is without a doubt is David. It's because God said that David was a man after his own heart. And yet, Satan will tempt you. Satan tempted David. And Satan will tempt us. Why does he want to tempt us? Tempt us? He wants us to break the fellowship that we have in God. Now, I do want to, I want to emphasize this. You cannot lose your salvation. You can break fellowship with God when you sin. But see, Satan does not want us to have fellowship with God. When we have fellowship with God, we're obeying God, we're listening to God, uh, we're most likely doing the things that God wants us to do. So, you know, as Jesus' uh, purpose was to please the Father, the purpose of man existing is to please God. Uh, Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 is recorded as this, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasures they were created. We were created to please God. We were created to, actually, you know, we were created to be saved by God, to have a fellowship with Him. That's what God wanted with His creation. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, we are not all God's children. We are His creation. We do not uh, become His child until we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. So we notice this that in this verse that all things, including man, were created for God's pleasures, which means that our purpose on earth is to please God. Over there in Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 17, for by him were all things created, all things that are in the heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And in verse 17, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now I looked up that word consist in the, in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I hope I'll put the, Webster's, the old Webster's Dictionary. And that means to stand together, to be fixed or in a permanent state as a body composed of uh, parts of union or connection. Hence to exist, to subsist, to be supported, and maintain. Folks, we cannot move or breathe without Jesus Christ. You know, the reason why we have what we have is Jesus is holding us there together. You know, John one, John chapter one verses one through three. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Now, yesterday I was in the store and in a a thrift store, like you know, and I was just looking at different books. I like to see if they have any kind of books on the Bible or stuff. And I got to see, I, I found, I came across a, a Jehovah Bible. And, you know, and, and that right there is a false religion. Uh, sadly, people that are in the Jehovah Witness, they will die and they will go to hell. And the reason why is they do not uh, acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Now, in their Bible, and I said their Bible, 
You know, it says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and then they said the Word was a God. They got that little G. That, but I just thought I'd bring that out. But Jesus was God. They was letting you know that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We have That can be uh, cross-referenced to Genesis 1-1. In the beginning was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. This is acknowledging Jesus Christ as Savior. If this be the case, we need we need to we need to diligently seek and find what pleases God. And the question is, what can we do? What is it that we can do ourselves to please God? And one of the things is, it is faith that pleases God. Uh, over there in Hebrews 11, chapter 6, is recorded, but without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You want to know the greatest thing you can do is place your faith in Jesus Christ. Place your faith in God. But it says this, it goes on to say, For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not only do we need to seek Him, we need to continually seek Him. We need to be diligent about it. What do we need to do? Morning, noon, and night, we need to diligently seek the will of God. Notice that it is faith that pleases God. Faith is a dependence upon God. In other words, God wants us to depend upon Him. You know, He is the potter, and I am the clay. You're the, you're the clay. We need to let God make to make us and mold us into His will and what He wants us to do. I like this. You know, I look up. I was looking up acronyms. I was looking up uh, quotation people made about faith, and I came across this acronym of faith: feeling, F feeling, A afraid, I trust Him. Feeling afraid, I trust Him. So when we are in our fearful, when we have uh, fear of doubt stuff, we need to trust God. But uh, I like this. Faith is not knowing what the future holds, but knowing who holds the future. Even though I do not know what's going to happen to me in the future, I can have faith that God's going to be there and He holds the future. Now, it says this, bear in mind that the purpose of our existence is to please God, and faith is what pleasing pleases God, and faith is dependent upon Him. It's acknowledging God is not a crutch. You know, I like to say this, God is not my crutch. He's my life support. Without Him, I can do nothing. And I need to place my faith in Him. After all, He saved a worthless sinner such as I. He gave Jesus Christ His only begotten Son to die for my sins. I mean, God has been so good to me. I mean, in the good times and the bad. And whatever times I'm going through, I know that God is good all the time. I know... Uh, one of the things that we could place faith in God is we could place God, we could place our faith in God with our finances. And what do I talk, talk about that? We can tithe to God. And you probably think, oh no, here we go, the money thing. You know, what's wrong, folks? All God wants is 10%. And, you know, and, and I, I'll be honest with you, there are times I, I, my flesh struggle against me, you know, and, and, and all God wants is 10%. And even the word it said, it talks about 10%. The word tithe means 10%. I know some of you probably were figuring, well, uh, this is, do I give it to out of the gross or do I give it out of the net? You give it to give God 10% out of his gross. And Proverbs, if I'm not mistaken, it says, give him the first fruits of thy labor. And to me, that is 10% uh, of your gross. Now, I'm going I'm to tell you something, and, and I'll be honest with you. My flesh got the best of me one time, and, I, and I, that's what I do. I pay 10% out of my gross, and I, one payday came, and I was like, man, it says I, I, I need some extra money. And my flesh told God, says, all right, God, says, look, says, I'm going to give you 10%, but I'm going to give you 10% out of my net. And, you know, and, I, and I, one of the things that I do, that I do when I when I know I'm getting ready to get paid, the first thing I do is I write my tithe out. I I write it out into a check. And to me, this is not a bill. Paying your tithes is not a bill. 
You know, you don't treat it as such. You treat it as a way of thanking God for what He's done for you. But you know, like I said, you know, I like to write out a check. I'll write out my check, you know, and then that'll be it. Well, in my flesh, fleshly way, you know, I said, all right, I'm just going to pay you 10% out of my net. And I want to tell you right now, I got such, the Holy Spirit convicted me. And I realized, you know, this is, you know you're doing wrong. You know, and the Bible says, if you know to do right and you don't do it, it's a sin. And and I tell you what, God laid a conviction on me. And I realized that, you know, you know what, I said, Lord, you're right. I'm going to go ahead and just give you the 10% out of my gross. You know, and one thing that I do is, you know, uh, God has called me to preach. And, and the one of the things that I have set upon about in my finances, if I don't tithe, I can't preach. And that's the way I do it. And it's just not, I just don't give my tithes. I, for that reason, I give tithes to thank God. I mean, I was like, thank you, God, for letting me do this. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, paying your tithes is one way to show your faith in God. We can place faith in God uh, with our lives. My life is yours, God. There are so many things that we can place our faith in God. And here's the thing. Anything done without faith is sin. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if we do something just to satisfy our flesh, and we're not doing it in faith, it's a sin, folks. And basically, your reward's right there with you. Notice that anything that is done without faith is sin. In other words, if we do anything without depending upon God, it is sin. So, we, if we review this, our, the purpose of our existence is to please God. Faith is that depend upon what pleases God. Anything done without faith or anything done without faith or not in faith or without depending upon God is a sin. So that means what everyone does, whether you preach a sermon, whether I prepare a sermon, I need to prepare it in faith with dependence upon God, sing a solo, teach a Sunday school class, rear a family, clean a house, build a business, build a home, build a marriage, or whatever so one does, if it is done without dependence upon God, it is sin. So our whole thing, we should do everything with dependence upon God, we need to do it in faith. But, you know, we know that Jesus pleased the Father. We know that because the Bible says so. And lo, a voice from the heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, and who I am well pleased. How do we know that Jesus did, to seek, did not seek to please himself, but the Father? In Romans, what the Apostle Paul wrote, he said, For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. And you know, once again, I'll say this. And he, he that sent me is with me. That's what Jesus said. The Father hath not left me alone, for I always do those things that pleases him. And, you know, and think about it, the The Bible is recorded, so whatever you do, meet or deed, do it to please God. Uh, we need to put our all into it to please God and have faith and dependence upon him. Now, we didn't notice the weapon that Jesus used three different times. But he answers that it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We notice that word, it is written. I mean, it says this again in the second temptation. Satan says, hey, if you do this, Jesus responds, it is written. Then Jesus, uh, then you know, three different times, it is written. Jesus used the word of God with what we can use to combat the devil. There's no other way that there's no other way that we can combat the devil. We have we can pray, but we need this word. We need the Bible. We need this right here, folks. It's not a a, a dust collector. It's not a, a paperweight. It's not meant to have anything set on top of it. This is what we need. We need the King James Bible, folks. Uh, there is no other way to fight the devil. The only offensive weapon given is in Ephesians 6, this was the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 says this, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. How powerful is this weapon? Over there in Hebrews it says it's uh, uh, sharper than a two-edged sword, uh, dividing the soul of men and... Uh, I forgot that. 
But we know that over there in Hebrews. So what should we do, folks? We need to have the Word of God. We need That's the reason why we need to read it. We need to study it. Study to show yourself approved. We need to, to meditate on that Word. To muse. I like that word, to muse. It's to have a deep thought about that Word. And we need to memorize the Bible. Whenever you face this temptation, if you can memorize the Bible, Thy words have I hid in my heart that I may not sin again against Thee. Thy words are lamp to my feet and light to my path. Uh, there's just so many things that we can we can memorize the Bible, and you know, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting word. Uh, another one that I like to uh, memorize myself: For the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that know Him, and whosoever shall call whosoever nameth the name of the Son of Jesus. Uh, depart from iniquity. That's just paraphrasing right there. I mean, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Just memorize some Bible verses. Uh, don't take your don't take advantage of your Christianity. Uh, the, this right here is important. It's our bread. It's our water. It's our sword. It's our shield. And folks, we need. Uh, sadly, today. That's why on Christianity Day, a lot of people are not studying their Bible. There are people who are not even taking time to read it. I mean, you want to know the best time to read your Bible? Try to read it in the morning. Some people like to read it before they go to bed, and that's a good thing. But, you know, I like to try to read it in the morning. Because, you know, there's some examples of where Jesus, uh, he rose up early in the morning to go have time with God. How do we fight against Satan? We fight against Satan with the, with, with the Word of God. You know, God gave this to us. We are blessed in America to have to be able to have the Bible. So what we need to do, the purpose of our creation in closing, the purpose of our creation is to please God. It is faith that pleases God, and faith is dependent upon God. Apart from Christ, I can do nothing, but I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. If we do anything without faith or dependence upon God, it is a sin. The devil is constantly trying to get to us as he did Jesus. Throughout, I'm pretty sure throughout his ministry, he was trying to get Jesus to fail. Because he knew that if he can get Jesus to fail, then Jesus could not go to the cross of Calvary and die for our sins to save us from the sin, save us from our sins. To do God's work in the energy of the flesh is not in the power of the Spirit with dependence upon God. We cannot depend upon ourselves. You know, a lot of times if we do it upon, if we depend upon our flesh, we're doing it for our own vain glory. When he gets to us to do this, we have sinned because we have done something without depending upon the Father. The only way we can avoid this is by the Word of God. We fight him with the Word of God. We yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We and ask the Holy Spirit to work through us, throwing ourselves on the mercies of God. In everything we do. This is not only for spiritual matters, for secular matters too, at work, at home, at school and play. In every area of our lives, we should please Him, which means we must depend upon Him. If we don't, we sin. So in every aspect in our lives, we need to put forth the, the witness that we are Christians. Sadly, there's people that can be labeled as Sunday Christians. The only time they're a Christian is on Sundays. They live like the devil six days a week, and then comes Sunday, they call themselves a saint. And folks, that is not a good thing. That gives a bad witness and a testimony to Jesus Christ. That drags his name through the mud. Folks, being a Christian is an everyday thing. And how can we live as Christians? We take it one day at a time. That's all we can do, folks. Uh, we don't worry about tomorrow. We don't worry about the past we worry about the present and we live christians one day at a time and one of the things that we can do this is take time to fellowship god by praying by reading his words by going to church and in the words of forrest gump that's about all i gotta say about that but uh thank you for watching god bless you and you have a good day Table.